This is principlesofaccounting.com. This is chapter three. This is the final module on the income measurement segment. And in this particular module, we, we are going to consider the accrual basis versus the cash basis of accounting. Obviously, we've already spent considerable time talking about the adjusting process to correctly measure and report transactions and events in the financial statements, and that's required under generally accepted accounting principles. It's all part of the accrual basis of accounting, which is required under GAAP. However, some companies, some small businesses, companies that are not required to follow generally accepted accounting principles may decide that they want to apply a much simpler basis of accounting called the cash basis of accounting. Indeed, small businesses can even use the cash basis under certain tax circumstances. Now, let's consider the cash basis more closely. Under the cash basis, revenue is recorded when cash is received, no matter when it's deemed to be earned, and expenses are recorded as expense, when paid, no matter when they are deemed to be incurred. The cash basis is much simpler. However, you need to be aware that financial statements can be very misleading under the cash basis. There is another uh, method that's sort of a hybrid between the cash and accrual method. It's called modified cash or modified accrual basis of accounting. Basically, it's the cash basis in that revenues and expenses are recognized as cash is received or dispersed with the exception of large cash outflows for long-lived assets, in which case those assets are recorded as property, plant, and equipment and depreciated. Proper income measurement and strict compliance with GAAP dictates use of the accrual basis. Virtually all large companies use the accrual basis of accounting. Uh, again, the cash basis is for a narrower set of circumstances. I want to compare the results of using the cash and accrual basis for a hypothetical example. This example is taken from the textbook, and here's uh, Ortiz Corporation's cash basis income statement, and it appears they're doing quite well. Revenues $25,833, the various expenses total $10,100, and I've put a note here that this is for internal use only. The cash basis financial statement should not be used under generally accepted accounting principles. We got our revenue and expense information from the checkbook, cash receipts and disbursements records. And then there's additional information. Revenues, there are certain adjustments. The $9,000 deposit that was made on April 7th was an advance payment for work to be performed in April, May, and June. Within the textbook, if you want to see the details, there's actually a listing of all the company's checks and deposits. There's an $11,788 deposit on April 20th. It represents a collection of an account for which work was previously performed in January and February. Then, during April, we also learned that services were valued at $2,000. Those services have not yet been billed to the client. Expenses, we have various things to consider. There was a $700 payroll on April 3rd, but $650 of that amount related to the prior month. At the end of the month, there was an additional $350 that was due to our employees. There was a server that was in use, and it required a $1,416 payment on April 15th but $500 of that related to web traffic for the prior month. And then we had administrative costs that were incurred. There were $600 of accrued cost at the end of the month that had not yet been paid. And so if we look at our cash basis calculations, and we think about this, first, the $9,000 deposit on April 7th. I'm subtracting that from the cash basis revenues of $25,000 because although it was cash received, it will be performed during April, May, and June. So I'm taking out 9,000 and then adding back 3,000, the portion that's actually earned or relates to work provided in April. We also have collection of a prior receivable, the $11,788 amount. Notice that I'm subtracting that. This amount was collected but related to work performed in January and February. And finally, at the end of the month, I'm adding $2,000 for work that was done in April but has not yet been billed. And I get accrual basis revenues of just over $10,000. Quite a difference from the cash basis revenues. The expenses also involve adjustments. So I have a cash basis payroll expenses of just over $5,000. I'm subtracting $650 that was paid this month that related to work performed in a prior month. And I'm adding $350 for work that was performed this month but will not be paid until a future month. And so on an accrual basis, I get expenses of just over $4,700. The uh, server cost of $1,416, that was the payment on April 15th, but $500 related to a prior month. So I'm subtracting $500 from the total cost for the month to get the accrual basis server expense. 
And finally, the administrative cost. I'm adding $600 for the cost incurred that has not yet been paid. And so it would go in converting from an, a cash basis to an accrual basis. And now I've got the accrual basis income statement, and we actually only made $144 for the month once I carry the various expenses that I've recalculated over. And you can see that's entirely different than the accrual basis result. And that's not all that unexpected uh, that you get an entirely different answer because very often the cash flows of a business do not correspond to the accrual basis measurements. Both are important to understand for a particular business, but again, generally accepted accounting principles first and foremost relies on accrual basis concepts in measuring income.